Throughout my years of experience, I've used some pretty dumb techniques to get the effect that I'm after, not knowing that the effect actually already exists in After Effects. So let me show you 25 of them that will save you time and are actually pretty useful to know. Now first up is CC Light Sweep. You can add this to your layer and it simulates the effect of light moving across it, as though it's a reflective material. It's pretty easy to change and you can alter its direction, its strength, its width, its intensity. And then of course, you can keyframe the position along the layer to give that dynamic sweeping look. Next up is Turbulent Displace. This creates a turbulent or wavy look across your image. So you might find this useful. For instance, I have a gradient ramp on this solid here. I've just got a simple animation on each point, but if I add a Turbulent Displace layer to this on an adjustment layer, all I've done is animated the evolution and increased the size of it as well. Now if I play this, we get a cool distorted gradient look that's pretty trendy right now. The next effect is Key Light. You'll find this one under the Keying tab and we can add that to a layer. Now what Key Light will do is this is perfect for green screens or blue screens. All I need to do is select my screen layer and select the green on this cat here and you'll notice immediately it all goes away but we still have this kind of white uh, distortion around the edges where it's kind of overspilled. Now all we need to do is go down to our screen map and we can just alter the values here and increase the clip black to really bring that in. It kind of just works as a choker which leads me to the next effect. So say I've got a similar thing going on here but I could couldn't quite get rid of the overspill on the video. Now what I can do is add something called a simple choker. Now I prefer the simple choker as it's much easier to use than the matte choker, but there is two versions of it, so feel free to experiment. Now what this will do is either expand if we go into negative values or contract around our image. And you can see by pulling this value in, we start to lose a bit of the image on the edge. Now you can use this for things like green screening or also tightening up shape layers as well. So I can add this to a square for instance and it will make the corners rounded which is a pretty cool effect. CC page turn. Now this is one you might not be aware of but it can create that page turning effect just as the name suggests. So I can add the CC page turn to my top image here and you'll notice immediately we have this turning effect. But the way to get this to work is to keyframe its fold position. So say I'd want this to fold downwards. If I just turn on my guides and mask visibility here, uh, we can now see where this is exactly pointing. I could just keyframe this fold position and have this animate out. CC Sphere. Now CC Sphere is great for creating globes or turning anything into a sphere. So I have a map here which you can download from uh, the NASA website. If you didn't know, you can get all kinds of maps from the Earth. And I can just add the CC Sphere effect to this and I can just increase its radius. Now you'll notice we get some lighting and shading and perhaps we don't want that. So we can also alter these as well and I could just up the ambient to 100 and that'll give us a nice uh, sphere look. The good thing about this is we can rotate it around and give it that 3D look, kind of like a globe is spinning. Next we have CC Cylinder. Now this one is very similar to CC Sphere, but instead it creates a cylinder instead of a sphere, just as the name might suggest. Now you can alter its radius and position once more, and also of course its rotation too. Grain. Now next is more of a stylization effect than anything, and it can also help simulate realism in actual 3D renders. All we need to do is go to Effect, Noise and Grain, and Add Grain. It'll come up with this little preview window, but we can change its viewing mode to final output. And we can also tweak its intensity and the size of the grain and how it looks overall. If I were to just drop the intensity and maybe drop the size as well, so it all sits a bit tighter. It's not much of a difference, but it helps add a little something and texturizes our render. Mosaic. Now we have something called a mosaic effect as well and you might be familiar with this one in Photoshop. You'll find it under the stylized tab and then mosaic and it kind of creates a horizontal and vertical block uh, between your layers. So you can reduce this or also increase it as well 
to give you more definition. Now, this is great for blurring things out or giving that pixelated look should you require it. Now you can also add this to solid layers and layers with gradients on to create a white to black map. And I'll show you why this might be important in just a moment. Next, we have noise. Now noise has tons of uses, but one great use for noise is texture. And you can find noise under noise and grain, and then we're gonna add a fractal noise. Now to use this, we can alter our basic uh, contrast and brightness, but you'll also notice it just gives us a black to white pattern. Now feel free to play with this, but it definitely has its uses for maps, as I'm gonna discuss in a minute, but also texture like I mentioned. So we can increase this and really change the levels. So I want just a little bit of white there in my noise. And what I can do is add an offset effect to this and then add an expression to my shift center too. And I'm just gonna type in posterize time. And I'm gonna set that to four. And then I'm also gonna add a wiggle. And I'm gonna set that to a big value like 5,000. And I might just reduce the frequency there. Now, if I hit play, you'll notice we kind of have this textured noisy pattern, almost like an old film look. Or you might just want to add it on top of your background to add a little bit more texture to your project. CC Repetile. Now you'll find CC Repetile under Effect and Stylize, and we can add it to our layer. And this will just repeat our object. Now we, you'll notice if we add it, nothing actually happens. What we need to do is expand the right and left, and you'll notice it's just creating a repeated tile of our flower here. You can change how this appears. Well, this is great, perhaps you have an animation on this flower and you want to repeat it, or for things like text, and perhaps you want your text to stretch all across the comp. Now, if I add it into my text as well and then expand this, it allows for things that might not be able to have a repeater shape layer on it, and you can get a nice duplicated version throughout your comp. Time displacement. Now, I just have a very simple text animation here within a pre comp, and then I've applied the repetile effect to repeat that layer in lines, and then I can dupe that up and change the colors. Now, you'll also notice I have this thing called displacement. And going back to our gradient ramp and mosaic effect, I've created nine lines, which magically lines up with the amount of text I have. Now, I can use this in a time displacement on an adjustment layer. And you'll notice we have this time displacement layer. And I can set that to my displacement. I want it to work on effects and masks because my gradient is an effect on the layer. And so is the mosaic effect too. Now, if I turn this on, what's going to happen is everything is going to be delayed from the white to the black. And the way this works is the gray is a zero value. So gray will have no change on your animation. However, anything that's white will be ahead in time and anything that's black will be behind in time. And by doing that, we get a super easy offset animation and it kind of cascades making such a change to this text because everything's offset. And you'll notice from top to bottom, that's where we have the white to black on our displacement map. So this is the first one to start and this will be the last one. It's a very, very useful effect for creating easy offset animations. CC Lens. Now, CC Lens is a cool one for creating lens distortion on your footage, and you might want to use it for things like transitions. Super easy to create that distorted look you might see on a lot of your favorite videos and transitions. Next is CC Bend It. You can add this to your layer and set some start and end points. So you'll notice mine is the top and bottom of my shape. And then we can easily bend this shape path, which looks pretty cool. And it's a super easy way to add some extra flair to your animation. Grow Bounds. Now, while CC Bender is great for shape paths, you might notice should use an Illustrator file, it could cause problems. So if I add a CC Bend It to this flower layer here and change my start and end points to match the layer and then add a bend, you'll notice it's stuck between the bounding box of the actual layer. However, we can apply something called a grow bounds to this layer and we need to put it above our bend it so it comes in the order of operations. And uh, if I just bend this more and then we can increase the pixel width and you'll notice it's growing the edge of our bounding box so we can get that full bend effect and it still works on an illustrator layer as well, ignoring its original bounding box. Posterize time. Now this is an absolute classic that I use pretty much all the time and you'll notice I have this animation here which looks super smooth but that wasn't necessarily the style I was going for. So what I can do is add posterized time to this 
and alter its frame rate from 25 to 12 or 24 to 12. And now it's kind of like we're working on twos and everything's a lot more choppy and give it that old school hand-drawn look. CC wide time. Now, if you've ever done hand-drawn animation, you'll know the importance of onion skinning. But unfortunately, After Effects doesn't really make it clear how to do this out the box. But say you need onion skins, you can add the effects CC wide time. And you can see here, you can alter its forward steps or its backward steps. And you can change how much of the object you can see. So if I set this to four and then change my forward steps to zero, it'll show me the last four frames of this object. And this can be very useful for doing path animation or hand animation with an After Effects. Transform. So say I have this animation here and I really like the loop. So I want to dupe this up. And without having to alter all my keyframes, say I have more than two, this is just an example, uh, but say I have more than two and I don't want to alter all this. While I could use a null, I could also use something called the transform effect. And this is essentially opening up a bunch of new transform properties on this layer. And I can just move this in the transform instead and alter its scale as well, or perhaps its position. And this allows for duplicates made super easy without having to mess around with any keyframes. It also means you can double up animation. So if I wanted to add more positioning to this, I could also keyframe that so it goes up and down as well on a separate position. Radial scale wipe. Now for a long time, I used to do a circle transition using mats, and that was until I found this. And I'll be honest, this was only very recent that I came across this, but we can add something called a radial scale wipe. And this essentially simulates the idea of a circle transition, and that will take us to a full alpha underneath. Next, we have the echo effect. Now, echo is a favorite of mine, and I actually touched on it in my last video, but it's great for creating smears. So say we have this ball animation here, and I want a smear in the middle. We can add the echo effect to this layer, and we can change the echo operator to maximum. And then I'm just going to slightly reduce the echo time. And perhaps I want to increase the number of echoes to five. And then you'll notice we start getting this smear look and it happens on the velocity of our animation. All it's doing is essentially echoing the animation you already have on. Now, if we want smears on this, I'd probably keyframe that on my own to make it look more natural as the smear only really lasts for two frames. And to do that, we can just change the number of echoes and keyframe that to flick on and off. Radio waves. Now you can find the radio waves under the generate tab down here near the bottom and it's pretty useful for creating a burst of circles and perhaps you want it to show on a map kind of pinpoint a location and it's super flexible you can also use it in 2.5d as well and you can alter as much as you want you can change how much the circles expand how often the circles are its lifespan and its direction its colors kind of like pre-comping a bunch of circles and then pasting that in, which is something I also used to do. Next, we have Wave Warp. Now, another effect I use and absolutely love using, and you've probably seen it everywhere by now, is the Wave Warp. And we can add this to our layer under Effect and Distort, and we can see Wave Warp. And if I just play this, you'll notice we have this pretty horrible looking effect. But if we change our parameters, and I want my direction to be zero, and then I'm just going to increase the width of this. I always get them both confused to give us a bit of warp. And you can also animate the phase if you want to. And I'm also going to pin this to my bottom edge because my bottom edge is off screen. And then if I play this, we get this cool warping effect. But however, we can make this better. And that leads me to my next effect, mirror. So the mirror effect is also under effect and distort and mirror. And it does exactly like it sounds. It will mirror your layer or your object. But the interesting thing is it also mirrors effects on that layer as well. Now, for some reason, it also places the uh, reflection center over to the right of your comp. So what I'm going to do is drag this over to the center of my wave warp and it will reflect from that instant. Uh, we now have a nice symmetrical wave warp, which looks a lot nicer than that messy lopsided one that we had before. CC composite. I'll say I have this text here and I kind of want to make it look like a neon sign. Now what I would normally do is blur this and use a fast box blur 
uh, just increase that and then dupe it up and then take that off and it gives us the kind of look I was going for but say I want loads of these and then I'm going to end up with a ton of layers we can actually use CC composite for this so I have this blurred layer here and I can add CC composite to this now I want this to be at the top of our layer stack which I know sounds weird but it is actually the bottom in the order of operations that means it's last to be applied which is what we want and we want to turn off this RGB only and you'll notice we now get this more of a nail look and I can just increase this blur to kind of show off more what it's doing and it's basically taking our original layer and pasting it back in front of uh, the blurred one and we can change this blending mode here to add as well to give us a bit more of a glow but the interesting thing is we can also add transforms to this so we could transform a layer above this and perhaps we want to scale it down to 90%. So it kind of looks like more of a distant shadow or we want to scale it up and create a more interesting effect. Uh, there's tons you can actually use this for. And more recently, there is also a layer source as well. So I could have a video layer in here, for instance, and add a CC composite. And this might need to be at the top of my comp for some reason uh, if it's a 3D render and we have multiple passes. Uh, and I could actually just select this uh, text layer and it will still paste in front despite it being underneath and the bottom of my layer stack. Uh, we could also change its blending mode here to overlay uh, so we get more of a text effect. I mean, we could do this in blending modes and layer stacks, but it could be a bit more of a complex scenario. Now, finally, we have corner pin and you'll find this one under effect, distort and corner pin. And say I have a layer here and we need some video footage to be inside this screen. Perhaps we have a slow pan in and we've tracked it and all that. Uh, I've got this video file here, which I've put in a pre-comp, so it's a bit easier. Then if I want to change this video, it's super easy and there's no messing around uh, with the content. And I'll only have to do this corner pin once. So the corner pin allows us to manipulate the corners of this uh, and of this comp. And what I can do is just turn on my uh, toggle mask path filler visibility here. And I can just drag these corner pins in to match up to the uh to match up to the screen here uh, and then our video fits perfectly in the screen and plays as it should you can also learn some more effects by watching this video next